This is Twit. Comcast has accused Netflix and Discovery Communications and other companies that oppose the company's deal, $45 billion proposed deal to acquire Time Warner Cable. Uh, Comcast says that they're failing at extortion attempts to get special favors. Now, this is in response to comments that were filed over the summer by a variety of companies who oppose this deal. Comcast told regulators today that the complaints, quote, are even more unfounded here because many of them are only being made because Comcast refused to grant various self-interested requests soon after the Time Warner cable deal was announced, such as free backbone interconnection and wholesale agreements and... As Comcast puts it, many requests to agree to carry networks that do not even exist yet. Discovery and Netflix have already publicly denied Comcast's extortion charges. In a statement today, Netflix argues, quote, It is not extortion to demand that Comcast provide its own customers the broadband speeds they've paid for so they can enjoy Netflix. It is extortion when Comcast fails to provide its own customers the broadband speed they've paid for unless Netflix also pays a ransom. People just can't get along in the cable industry. Reuters is reporting that Amazon is hiring employees at its Silicon Valley-based hardware unit called Lab 126, kind of mysterious place, by at least 27% over the next five years and plans to boost its full-time payroll to about 3,700 people by 2019. Reuters is citing an agreement the company reached with California back in June that would give Amazon a $1.2 million tax break. People familiar with the company's plans tell Reuters that Lab 126 may test internet-connected smart home gadgets such as a one-button device to order supplies. Specifically, Amazon is reportedly testing a Wi-Fi device that could be put in a kitchen or maybe a closet, allowing customers to order products like detergent by pressing that button and might also be interested in wearable devices along with every other company in the world. Lab 126 projects include the 2007 debut of the first Kindle e-reader and the recently launched Fire Phone. So, you know, some hits and some misses there. BlackBerry's new handset, speaking of, well, I'll let you be the judge. The Passport went on sale today at BlackBerry's website and at Amazon with an off-contract price of $599. That's, of course, lower than the iPhone 6, the 6 Plus, and the Samsung Galaxy 5S which it's going after. AT&T announced it will also offer the smartphone, but hasn't announced pricing or availability yet. The Passport is unique that it has a square shape at 4.5 inches with a 1440 by 1440 pixel touch screen. The square screen is 30% wider than the average five inch smartphone, allowing it to display 60 characters across compared to 40 characters on a regular five inch device or a more common one anyway. Though some reviewers have already complained the phone is just too wide. The Passport ships running the latest version of BlackBerry's OS 10.3, which includes a new voice-controlled BlackBerry Assistant. And as always, the company touts the Passport security as a strong point, including remote lock and wipe, control over app permissions, and data encryption. Samsung has announced that its upcoming Tizen-based smartwatch, the Gear S, which the company announced back in August, will go on sale later this fall at Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, and T-Mobile. The Gear S will have a 2-inch curved AMOLED display, support for 2G and 3G wireless networks, and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth hardware. The watch will house a 1 gigahertz processor, 512 megabytes of RAM, and have a 300 milliamp battery designed to last up to two days. Still no word on price seen though and that's really one of the most important parts shipping company dhl has announced that on friday it will begin piloting drone deliveries with a fleet of what it calls parcel copters to a german island in the north sea called juist which i just learned existed it has no cars but it does have a population of around 1,700 people. So drone flights will take place when other aircraft and ferries aren't operating. The parcel copter can travel up to 65 kilometers per hour. Drone testing is kind of all the rage these days. Google recently completed a series of drone deliveries in Australia, and Amazon said back in April that it was working on its seventh generation drone prototype. Oh, but let's not forget about Facebook when we talk about drones. Speaking on Monday during a talk at the Social Good Summit in New York City, engineering director of Facebook's new connectivity lab, Yale McGuire, said of the company's work on its own drones, quote, we're going to have to push the edge of solar technology, battery technology, and composite technology. The connectivity lab was established earlier this year with a goal to build and launch a fleet of solar-powered drones that could connect billions of people that are currently living off the grid 
of the internet. In order to fly its drones for months or even years, though, at a time, McGuire says that they'll have to fly above weather and above all airspace. Now, airspace is anywhere from 60,000 to 90,000 feet in the air. And that, quote, all the rules exist for satellites and we're invested in those. They play a very useful role, but we also have to help pave new grounds. Interesting. 